One of the most overlooked and more dangerous types of data leaks that affect software organizations are exposed Git configuration files. These files, which are usually located in the hidden Git directory at the root of the project, contain all the information that is required for version control, including the complete commit history, configuration files, branches, and references. Oftentimes, at some point in a project's history, especially a project that's kept in a private repository, which isn't always so private, as we'll soon see, a file that contains different types of secret tokens gets committed to the project. And even if that mistake is caught right away and the very next commit is to remove that file, it'll still be possible for anyone with access to the project's history to go back in time and see what that file was. And this is exactly what's been going on with a recent malware campaign dubbed Emerald Whale which so far has resulted in over 15,000 credentials and a terabyte of private data being stolen from private repos. Sysdig first discovered the malware campaign when analyzing a cloud honeypot where they noticed the list buckets command being issued for an account that they already knew had been compromised. For those of you less familiar with Amazon Web Services, the list buckets command returns a list of all the cloud storage containers that are owned by the authenticated account that is sending the request. So clearly, this was the hackers trying to see what buckets they could get into from the compromised account, and then they would go through those buckets to possibly see if there's any juicy information that they can sell or just extort the company for it. You know, hey, we're going to sell this information unless you give us a bunch of money. Or they could gather more authentication tokens from those buckets in order to probe deeper into the organization. The hackers even had one of their own buckets that they created under this account where a lot of the stolen data was being stored. And once the malicious activity was reported to AWS, that bucket containing the stolen data was taken down. But even amateur hackers know that the cloud is just some other guy's computer. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of the juiciest data was already exfiltrated to the hacker's personal hard drives and will show up for sale on a friendly neighborhood dark web forum sometime in the future. Oh, and speaking of the dark web, some of the tools that the hackers were using that were discovered during the investigation into the malicious AWS bucket were believed to be purchased from an underground marketplace, either on what we would traditionally think of as the dark web, you know, I2P, Tor, or whatever, or in a Telegram group or through some other encrypted chat app. Now, the tools that these hackers were using were called MZRv2 and Sezo v2. And they're a collection of different scripts that automate this collection and validation of credentials from vulnerable hosts. All the hacker really has to do is gather a list of IP addresses that they want to target and feed that into the first script named gitfinder.sh, which uses an open source tool called HTTPX for this scanning. This tool lets you scan a lot of websites at once in parallel very quickly and check for things like what ports they're using, what version of TLS they're using, or in this case, the hackers were checking to see if these hosts had a particular file path that was accessible. So the underlying command in the script might look something like this to check through a bunch of IPs that are in the host text file and see if a .git forward slash config folder exists and can be accessed. And if it is accessible, then a second script called ghpurl.py is run, which uses wget to extract the content from that git config folder on that website, and then uses a regex to extract the URL line from the page that contains a username, an authentication token, and what type of credential it is. Next, there's a check user script, which uses GitHub's own API to test if the credentials that were obtained in the previous step are still valid. And if they are, the credentials get saved in a new file to be used with the next script. 
So now that the hackers have valid Git credentials, they can use those to start downloading repositories, even if they're private. And like I said earlier, those private repos will oftentimes have credentials hard-coded in them somewhere. So the script looks through those repos for things like AWS keys, and then uses AWS CLI commands to verify those credentials and check what their capabilities are. If they're able to create new users with administrative capabilities, then there's a script to do that for them. There's also scripts to check for SMTP capabilities and create new SMTP credentials and verify if mail is able to be sent from those servers. Interestingly, the script that checks if email sending works is written in JavaScript. So Node and NPM have to be installed to the compromised AWS instance in order to run that. Now, of course, if hackers are able to send emails from a trusted provider and those emails pass DKIM checks because they're actually coming from the provider and not from a spoofed address, then that's going to allow the hackers to run a very successful spam or phishing campaign or more likely sell that option to another group that specializes in phishing. Imagine a group that has already been doing some reconnaissance to fish a specific target, you know, figuring out how they're going to word their message and what kind of angle they're gonna to use to trick this person. And they know personal details about that person. And then they're able to send them an email that legitimately looks like it's coming from a service that they use. Even a person with excellent OPSEC might fall for a scam like that. Now, the Sezo v2 tool is very similar. The main difference is after the HTTPX portion of the script runs to find host with a valid Git directory, Sezo v2 uses a tool called Git Dumper to download all of that data from the Git repo. This is a code snippet from the dumpers shell script showing how the git dumper tool is used to search for different kinds of SMTP, SMS, and cloud provider credentials. Emerald Whale also did some good old fashioned bulk web scraping and analysis of the collected assets for cloud credentials. And some were found statically defined in different JavaScript files that were being used by the victim's websites. Now, the really obvious solution to prevent this type of attack is to simply never have credentials hard-coded into your project in the first place. But when you're still in the development and testing phase of the project, it's really handy to have an ENV file with database credentials or other tokens that are defined in it so that you don't have to copy-paste that information every time you restart the program. These configuration files are great for the development phase, but really bad for the production phase. A good way to mitigate this is to share those environment files through a separate channel, so not through your VCS system, and then add them to your git ignore file so that they never end up getting added to your repository directly. Now, of course, you still have to make sure that those configuration files don't leak from the other channel that you use to share them through, which is why it's also a good idea to just use totally different credentials during the development and testing phases and the deployment slash production phase of your project. That can also help with limiting internal access to your code when it's in production because if you're managing a large project with a lot of developers, you probably don't want everyone on your team to be able to touch the code base that's being used in production. Finally, before you deploy any project, it's a good idea to run it through a scanner like Trufflehog to search for hard-coded credentials. It can also validate the credentials, meaning it can attempt to log into them to confirm if that secret is live or not, and it can give you other details about secrets in your project, like who created them, what resources they can access, and what permissions does the secret have on those resources. There's another open source tool called GitLeaks, which used to be much faster than Trufflehog, although I think that might have changed since the Trufflehog project was rewritten in Go, starting with version 3.0. But nonetheless, it's a good idea to run multiple secret scanners against your project before deployment. 
And there's also proprietary scanners like GitGuardian that can scan for these secrets as well. I would argue that this validation step for projects is even more important than looking through code comments for vulgar language. So make sure that you add secret scanning to your workflow so that you don't get pwned by the low hanging fruit that is statically defined credentials. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win. Get yourself some comfy merch like the Come and Find It hoodie or Little Damon hoodie. And 10% discount is still valid store-wide for anyone paying in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.